So good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our Coaching for Success Achieve Your Aspirations webinar. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined today by Sarah Levan, Clive Fathers and Richard Sham. As some of you will know, Clive and Sarah were both tax partners at large county firms before becoming accredited coaches and co-founding Fathers and Levan. They've kindly joined me today to share some insights into the world of coaching, what it is and how it can be of benefit. Richard is currently the Director of Tax and People at Wisteria Limited. He's joining us today all the way from Singapore, which I'm very grateful for, and will be offering some first-hand personal experiences of using a coach. There will be a chance to ask questions at the end of the session, so please feel free to send them through as we go along. If you can just pop them into the Q&A box, that would be great. Um, but to kick things off, I would like to start with a poll, um, and this will be to find out why you've joined us today. This will be coming up shortly, and it would be great to have everybody's contribution. I appreciate some of you might have multiple reasons for being here, but if you can just pick the most pertinent one um, for the purposes of this, that would be great. And it is anonymous, so don't be shy. So I'll just give you a minute to answer it. So if we can just share the results. Great, so it looks like we've had a tie um, to find out what coaching is and to learn what the benefits of coaching are, which is great, as we will be covering um, both those points in detail, as well as the other point about when to use a coach. Um, so Clive, starting with you, um, oh. I'm sure the audience would love to know, after having such a long career in tax, what made you decide to go into coaching? Excellent question, Sarah, and thank you um, for inviting Sarah and myself uh, along today. So um, I guess from my perspective, I've always enjoyed the people development aspects of, of the role anyway. Um, and then there's there's something, uh, for me personally, a great sense of satisfaction from helping people achieve things that maybe they didn't realise they can achieve. And I suspect that's probably linked back to, to some of my own experiences as, as I was coming through the system um you know, having been the only person from my family to go to university you kind of go into the world of professional services and think oh my goodness this is so different um and really benefiting from having i guess mentors probably more so in those days and we'll, we'll talk about the difference a bit today um there's really the chance to to help other people um benefit and then would Grant Thornton were, off, were uh, developing a pilot scheme for to introduce coaches within Grant Thornton I jumped to the opportunity to do that um, so that was way back in 2012 and I've been coaching internally since then uh, had been coaching internally with Grant Thornton and as I was gaining the insights as to the techniques it's really interesting to kind of start to understand how broad, broadly they can be applied Mm -hmm. So with my team members and with one-to-one -one conversations generally, I'm probably of most use at that particular moment in time was with my three teenage daughters. They were the coaching <laughs> skills came in very handy. I bet. And what um, what training did you have to do to become a coach? So um, for the initial accreditation at Grant Thornton, it was to coach internally. And that was probably a nine month um, training program where you, learn about different coaching techniques and also had some um very help very friendly and kind guinea pigs to help coach with so uh, did that there and then coached um predominantly people is coming through to partner and director and helping them under understand what they wanted to do and why they wanted to do it um and then when sarah and i decided to kind of become market facing coaches sarah had already got her accreditation i got uh, something called practitioner level accreditation mm -hmm. um, in April of last year, which again took about another nine months to, wow. to apply. And had you ever used a coach yourself before Grant Thornton brought in the scheme? Yeah, actually, um, when I was at Grant Thornton, I was going up to going through director there. Um, having previously been a director at Deloitte, um, I was joining Grant Thornton to build a team that didn't exist, so there wasn't a business case when I first joined. And surprisingly, having already been through the process once, I was 
I think there were two things I was probably struggling with a bit. The first was just why why do you want to be a director? Um, mm -hmm. And then secondly, one of the pieces of feedback I got from the previous process I've been through, but they almost seemed surprised that I got through um, <laughs> because I was, well, apparently my profile is quite different to most people that go through the director process. Um, and I kind of, I got really hung up on, I didn't realise at the time, it was only when I was talking to the coach and I said, well, you know, my profile's a bit different to most people. And she said, well, why would you want your profile to be the same? Why wouldn't you want to stay? Yeah. And that was a real aha moment. So um, I will just give her a quick name check in case she's tunes in at some point. Liz Rivers <laughs> was an idiot. She was, she did, um, that was my first experience of being coached and it was, it really yeah. did make, make a difference in terms of my career. Brilliant, brilliant. And Sarah, what about you? Why did you decide to go into coaching? Ah, uh, so kind of similar to Clive in a way. So I spent quite a lot of my time um, in my career as I progressed to become more senior, um, involved in the talent development of others. Um, and I think think probably earlier on in in my career, there were fewer women um, kind of at some of those senior levels, particularly ones that perhaps had children. And so. I kind of got a lot of people asking me for help and for for mentoring, um, and I really enjoyed it. And I and it was a big part of my role. Um, and then I moved to EY, and they offered me a coach um, as a transition into EY, and it was just eye opening in terms of how different it was um, to be coached rather than to be given the answers. And I think it was at that point I just thought I want to do the best for these people I can, and coaching just felt like a much better way to do it than simply mentoring. I mean, there's the combination, and as Clive said, we'll talk, we can talk about that, but that's kind of why I got into it, just that kind of realisation of just how powerful it can be. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously you mentioned that EY gave you the opportunity to use a coach. Are there any other kind of points in your career, having had that experience where you look back and go, oh, it would have been useful to have one? Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I think... All, all the way through my career, people were always really good about giving up their time to support and help. I never had that kind of it thought that people were too busy. Mm -hmm. But when I look back, it was a lot of mentoring. And that was great. I mean, mentoring is a really great thing to, to have. Um, but when I look back at my career, I think there were certain points that I thought, now, that would have been really great. So, for example, when I was on mat leave with my second daughter, um, I came back to work earlier than I intended because I was told that I would be on kind of the track towards partner promotion mm -hmm. um, and I think a coach at that point helping me work through that would have been really helpful I may have made the same decision but I didn't really have any way to kind of think that through yeah. um, so I think at that point that would have been helpful and then I think the other bit was when I think back to how how did how could I create the right boundaries around my career? So and I'm boundaries in terms of how do how do I make sure I am giving it all to my job and giving it all to my my kind of outside of work? And I and I don't think I got that right all of the time. In fact, I know I didn't. And I think sometimes just having the opportunity to talk that through with somebody, what would happen if I didn't do X, Y, Z? What would happen if I did? And perhaps. Yeah you know, being more confident about what I was bringing to the workplace. I think that those would have been really helpful for me in my career. Yeah, definitely. And I can imagine like having sort of a, an outsider's perspective on that, because it's probably quite a difficult, well, most people would find it quite difficult to sort of broach those questions with their, the person they report into or people within their team for kind of fear of repercussions, so to speak. Yes, totally. Even if there aren't any. And and, and yeah. I think that, you know, coaching gives you that space to explore those things kind of a bit bit more independently. And I'll, I'll say safely, I, I think, it, and, yeah. and give you the time to actually focus on them. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you often won't raise those in your career, even if they wouldn't actually. Um, chances are most businesses will be very supportive of your conversation. Yeah. But actually, I think deep down yourself, you might not feel terribly comfortable doing it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I know um, in our first poll, sort of ahead of this webinar, we asked our network why somebody would use a coach. And I found sort of the results really interesting. I think it was 53% said that they thought a coach would be used when somebody was struggling at work. 27% um, said they thought when somebody was being promoted. Um, and only 13% said it was when somebody was working towards a promotion. 
um, which I found really interesting because it sort of suggests people feel that I guess sort of the most valuable time to use a coach is when there's a problem rather than before a problem arises. Um, I know I've only sort of used a coach once in my time and that was when I was undertaking a leadership course recently and I found it really sort of positive experience. Were these results what you expected, Clive? Um, it wasn't a surprise, let's put it that way. Um, it, it, I think more employers are starting to realise the benefits of coaches for, for everyone. Um, historically, there always there was a stigma around, oh, if you've got a coach, it's because there must be something wrong. But if you if you if you look at quite often, business draws parallels with sport, doesn't it? And if you look at most elite athletes. They'll have, a, they'll have two or three different coaches. So you know, that's to get that just to get that little bit more one percent extra out of them. So if it's if an elite athlete who's already at the top of their game would benefit from working with a coach, why wouldn't an elite business person also benefit from working yeah. with a coach? And I Very think the, true. those businesses that start to appreciate that will really unlock the potential of their people. You know, I I, I don't think I would have achieved what I would have achieved without the benefits of a coach um yeah and i just wonder how many other people would could you know go from being really good to being really great yeah and, and have that opportunity yeah definitely and what situations would you say sort of a most person i guess is somebody using a coach then um I, I think the common if i was to kind of put a common umbrella over it i, I, I would say it's, it's someone who wants to change and is curious Quite often you hear people talking about a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. It's really people who have got a growth mindset who can be anywhere in their career. I know Sarah's really passionate about this point. Um, you, you, if you want to change and be the best person you can be, then a coach can help you achieve that. Yeah, definitely. And Richard, you've obviously recently worked with Fathers in the Van. Had you ever used a coach prior to this? Um, so no, but firstly, obviously, thank you for inviting me um, to be on this webinar with you guys. So uh, yeah, prior to working with uh, Clive and Sarah, personally, no, um, obviously being at Wisteria, we, we, we have, yeah, as a firm, we haven't, but also personally, I haven't used or hadn't used a coach prior to working with both Clive and Sarah. And what made you then sort of decide to use one? Um, so, you know, Quite a few of the points, I guess, where someone is going through their career was very much on that pathway at Wisteria. Um, you know, I progressed through the sort of, as they say, the juniors to the manager level, going through to the more senior levels. And yeah, it was that the curiosity behind, well, I've now reached a point in my career, you know, I've reached being a director, but now that I'm, let's say, near the top of the tree, who do I then learn from? Who do I, or who can I go to, to sort of, challenge myself to make myself a better director not just personally but also to to you know to the wider firm mm -hmm. um so that was sort of really what triggered it and yeah it, it was that that growth mindset to work out who i could learn from to to become that you know that 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 better individual within the firm to go above and beyond yeah absolutely um I know in our second poll, sort of linked to the first one, we asked sort of why an individual would use a coach um, and a similar sort of response, really. 46% said they would consider using a coach to fix a problem. Sarah, what was your kind of view on this? Was this outcome what you expected? Um, linking back to what Clive said, no, not really. It doesn't surprise me. That's for a couple of reasons. So I think, firstly, if people hear the word coaching, in the context of it being a remedial thing, then they're going to link coaching to something that is there to fix something. So if, if people say, well, so-and-so needs to do this, we'll get them some coach to help them, you know, particularly around performance management. I think that can lead to that. And then I think secondly at work, we're often in an environment, aren't we, where we are looking to others to help us fix things, to kind of give us the answers to stuff, um, because that's just how we how we operate, isn't it, often? And so I think people would say your coaching is there to fix a problem. Having said that, 
what we define problem as could be anything. So we might think of a problem as something really bad in terms of someone's performance, but they might say, I've got a problem because I've got a really hard conversation to have with someone next week. Perhaps coaching can help me. So how you define that is critical. So I, I wasn't surprised, but I think you can kind of take quite a lot from the way people are approaching it is to do something like Kai said, to change yeah. or to fix something that, you know, how how they define it is actually really important. Yeah, absolutely. And what do you think are sort of the biggest benefits then of coaching? Um, I think that it can help unlock things that you didn't even contemplate before because I think it creates such a safe and unjudged space to kind of explore topics and feelings and thoughts that you might not feel comfortable as we said earlier exploring in the workplace so imposter syndrome you've probably heard of that where people go I'm not quite good enough I'm going to get found out that's often explored in coaching and it can unlock some quite surprising ways of reframing how people think um so I think it creates solutions and actions that you do yourself you think about yourself therefore that will be right for you in a way that probably mentoring and providing advice doesn't Mm -hmm. and I think it can create boundaries and perspective um, on things it can create self-awareness because again you can be a bit more honest about oh I'm worried about that I don't know how I came across on that and someone can help coach that um, and I think most importantly, it probably creates that re- a, a time that is just for you, about you, to talk about you. Um, yeah. And how often does that really happen? And that that gives that kind of self awareness, diff- different, you know, different perspectives, understanding perhaps your role and responsibilities in a particular situation as well. Yeah. Um, so all of those are kind of some of the real tangible benefits of coaching and and I think Clive used the word aha often I've been working with people and they've gone they've had a real aha moment Mm. it's not something I've told them it's something they've worked out for themselves yeah I know when I did coaching I just found it really useful to kind of have as you said that kind of dedicated time out and I'll be honest I probably had points where I thought I've got so much else to do (laughs) can I really fit this into my day but then just having that chance to kind of take a step back um you know and and look at what you're trying to kind of achieve Percy I think that's really a really good point and Richard ignoring the fact that Sarah and Clive are on this call um what did you kind of find most beneficial from your coaching journey um I mean you obviously get to work with great individuals such as Sarah (laughs) and Clive uh I have to say that um but no you know both Sarah and Clive have touched upon a lot of the points and they resonate with me um, in the sense that, you know, it, it does push you. And I think one of the big things for me was obviously within the workplace, yes, you have, you know, we talk about this a lot about psychological safety, but there might be a point or, or, or a topic which you actually find that you're not too keen on speaking up about it within the workplace because of, you know, the negative repercussions, even though you'd like to think that, your workplace is a is a safe place to talk and therefore any opinions or thoughts or, or comments you have shouldn't you know be seen on you as negative comments or whatever it is so that was one of you know I think that's one of the big things for me where you know typically the, the sessions that I you know have booked in a, a sort of you know an hour or so long but you know Clive and Sarah are both great they don't stick to that it goes on for, for quite a long time um, but that's hugely beneficial to me because it allows me the time, it allows me the freedom and, you know, it's, it's that safe space, the comfort that you get to explore your own, you know, everything in your, your sort of needs and therefore it helps you take your time to, to come up with the solutions or, or have, you know, have the likes of a Sarah or Clyde probe at you so that you can then realise actually you are able to work out the answers and, and come up with the solutions. So, those are really the benefits. You know, they, they, they both helped me through sort of some, I guess, stickier situations. And, you know, yeah. there, there's definitely still some other topics that, that we go through. You know, it's, it's, it's not that you or for me personally, it's not that I have a coach and I have them for whatever it is, four, six, ten sessions. It's an ongoing thing because there's always going to be, you know, we, we call them problems, but how I see them is, I, I, you know, I see them as things that we just need to navigate and, and come out of better than we went into it really um so uh, there's no end to coaching and you know as i said although you get to a level of your career whether it's manager senior manager assistant 
director or partner, it's still hugely important because learning never stops. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that's sort of my, my own viewpoint and hopefully that sort of resonates with the rest of you guys on here and also the people that are, are watching. Um, but you should always, or I always feel that you should always be learning because if you, if you stop to learn, then that's sort of, it, it's an indication that you, you've reached that point. But I think you can always go further and always achieve more. Um, yeah. But And I hope there's other people out there. So it has benefited me. Um, and yeah, it's sort of driving me to become, as I said, uh, the best that I can become with help of you know, yeah. individuals like Sarah and Clive. Brilliant. And that kind of leads me nicely on to sort of, I guess, our next poll, which was around sort of what an individual would want from a coach. Um, And I think sort of the overwhelming majority, 76% of people felt that a coach would be somebody that would guide and mentor them. Um, 80% felt that a coach would help them to change and only 1% said that a coach would help them tell them what to do. I don't think anybody likes being told what to do <laughs> necessarily. Um, I mean, Sarah, were, were those results sort of what you expected? Did that surprise you at all? Um, again, no, because I think probably people confuse guiding and men- yeah, my mentoring and coaching anyway. So I, I think that there's an element of being being helped to understand what to do um, and I think we tend to look to others for guidance and support don't we We want to know well how did it work for you and what are the answers um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing by the way I mean it's it's you know it's great to have mentors in in the um, workplace and of course if people are new to coaching they might not have thought it through how um, a coach might work I really like that only one percent be would be someone that told them what to do because I think when someone asks you for advice, the temptation is to say, oh, you need to X, Y, Z. And of course, often you, if the recipient of that, you'll hear that and go, well, that might be good, but actually I know that's not going to work for me. So I'm really pleased with that. And I'm also really pleased with almost a fifth of people said it's about change mm. because as Clive said, that's so often at the crux of coaching, whether it's a small change in, you know, how does how do I better have that relationship with that particular person partner or whether it's a big change I'm thinking about a career move or something so it didn't surprise me but it it quite pleased me I think if I can say that yeah yeah absolutely and what do you feel then a coach should provide someone I mean you've sort of touched on the point about helping them to change is there sort of anything else um I think they a, a good coach needs to provide someone with that really safe space where they know they will be listened to they know they won't be judged and I think that's that's people can I want to raise this point but I don't know what the coach is going to think actually it doesn't matter what the coach thinks so I think a good coach will make you feel you can say and explore whatever you want at the same time that coach needs to be honest and I can say challenging but in a nice way so holding up a mirror to somebody helping them to kind of see issues and understand issues and ask the right questions so that that kind of really kind of open safe space where I'm not going to just say something and they're going to go yeah all right then they're going to ask well what did you mean by that when you said that word what did that what does that mean for you when you say you want to do this how sure are you want to do this what else can get in the way so that kind of kind of challenge um and you know the, the coach provides this kind of open space so I always say the coach guides the process of what happens but not the content of a session because that's up to the individual so for me that's what the, the coach needs to be able to provide to somebody and how would you say that sort of mentoring and coaching differ and do you think that it makes sense for people to do both at the same time or Oh, that, that's a good question. So so if I was looking at the difference, I mean, in essence, I would say mentoring is normally where you, you have someone who's pr- almost certainly more senior to you, who's gone through a similar experience. It might be in the same job, in the same role, and it might be in a different industry, but it's normally someone that's gone through something that you're probably going through mm-hmm. um, and who can share their experience and their knowledge to perhaps help you so it might say a mentor might say well this worked for me this was really how it worked um, for me this is what happened when I did this um perhaps you could try that kind of language and and it might help you know I can give you a connection here I can open this door mm-hmm. coaching is much more an equal partnership rather than hierarchy and actually you know a coach could be someone junior to you someone that is not the same level as you 
um, in a completely different industry um, because it's helping the it, you, it's facilitating questions and asking the right questions to help the individual find their own answers and work off works off the premise that they are the ones that know the solutions themselves. They know what best works for them. Um, and of course, there is an element of crossover because when you pick a coach, you are likely to pick someone that has similar experiences to you. Mm. And, and a good coach will facilitate and ask the right questions based on that experience. But yeah, so so there's almost like a blend. I mean, in the purest sense, there is coaching and you're asking the right questions, but you would then ask permission. So if you were in a position where you might be able to help someone, might I share or would it be helpful if so you can introduce some kind of mentoring but not in as a director way um and i've had relationships where i have coached people in the purest coaching sense and i've also mentored the same person mm. not normally at the same time i must say normally it kind of is separate but you know you'll use your experience to ask the right questions yeah absolutely and Chloe, can you tell us a little bit about what a coaching session involves Oh, of course, maybe if I actually kind of paint a picture of how the relationship takes shape and get, add colour to it without taking that painting analogy too far. Um, so I think that we were, we always recommend a, a, an initial session to, to test the chem. We call it a, a chemistry session. So it's really important to have a coach who you can who you get on with. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're all human beings. We, we connect more easily with some people than others. So I think have have a chemistry session to make sure you you get on with each other. Um, different coaches have different styles in the in the same with everything else. Um, then we do actually contract with individuals, so there is a, a contract in terms of our mutual expectations from, mm -hmm. with each other. They include confidentiality and those types of things. And then once you get into the actual coaching sessions, a, a coaching session typically lasts, I don't know, a, an hour to a, an hour and. 50 minutes to just over an hour um mm -hmm. it's just just kind of it's quite and it's quite a tiring um a, a tiring occasion if it's done properly because you know, as sarah said earlier there's an element of support and there's also an element of challenge so mm -hmm. a good coach will make you feel uncomfortable at times um so you need to you need to build the rapport with them so that it's a feels like a safe place again which is you know, Richard picked up on and Sarah said as well the best sessions come once you've got that real trust mm -hmm. with with the between the coach and the coachee then you can really say what's on your mind yeah um, and then and then be prepared to be challenged in, in a in a in a nice way but you know, it, it's important to kind of challenge and support in equal measures I, I think probably you know 50 50 I for my sessions um I like to kind of identify identify some actions as we get towards the end of the session. So if you like, Richard always calls it homework. So he's got some <laughs> things to do. Um, uh, and, and then the next session may be you know, four to six weeks away, depending on, on how meaty the actions are and, and other commitments for the individual as well. Yeah. And Richard, can you offer some insight into how you went about finding a coach? Because I can imagine if somebody's never used one and their business doesn't sort of have them, it might feel quite overwhelming. Yeah, so my, the first place was just a Google search, um, if I'm being honest. And, you know, when you <laughs> Google search, you know, executive coaching, there's there's many people that come up. Um, you don't just click the first one, you click a few. Um, I also had a few connections that had used coaches and um, and then obviously, you know, I, I know or uh, have known Clive for a few more years than I've known Sarah, but um, you know, we kept in contact and, you know, whilst he was doing all the coaching, it was sort of the exploratory, exploratory core, the chemistry meeting. Um, I had done some with other executive coaches and I think what, what Clive says is very, very true in that you don't or, or you won't always warm to every coach the same mm -hmm. way because every coach has their own different unique style and you know some will be you know let's call them huggable and others will be probably less able to do that sort of nicety side and might come across more salesy just to, to, to get the sort of the coaching contract if that's what we'll call it yeah. um so yeah you know I, I did a number of these and it, a lot of them that I found just didn't feel the right fit for me and I think that's what it is you know coaching isn't just about ticking the box it's about finding 
the right fit for you as an individual. And, you know, I, I presume or I, I believe it's the same the other way around. Mm -hmm. uh, because in order to get the best, you both have to work together. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, Sarah both said, you know, with a mentor, it might be a, a suggestion of doing something, whereas the coaching is more about, okay, how, how do you think you can go about doing this? And it's more of that problem solving internally to for you yourself to work it out and, and the guidance. And yeah, one of the words that is always said in the meetings that I have with or the sessions that I have with Clive is it's a challenging session because, you know, Clive does like to challenge me. Um, but I have that comfort to be able to do that. And, you know, yes, it is exhausting. Um, and after, you know, a day of rest and then sort of, uh, going back and reflecting on what was said and what you know what, what we agreed my homework was it's hugely beneficial mm -hmm. um, and then you realize it's come from me basically um, yeah. obviously the big guidance for Christ so it's hugely powerful so yeah it was it was about finding the right fit for me um, and having that you know the, the, the chemistry call or the chemistry meeting is, 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 is a must otherwise you might not get the best out of it yeah absolutely I can definitely well, see that. And Clive, obviously, other than contacting you or Sarah um, for coaching, I mean, obviously, we've talked about, you both talked about sort of the chemistry point, which, you know, completely resonates with me. Have you got sort of any other advice for the audience in terms of finding the right coach? Maybe it's questions somebody would ask on that kind of preliminary call to find out whether the chemistry is right? Yeah, I'd in the unlikely event that you would go further than farther than the bank, having spoken <laughs> to Sarah and myself, um, now I would recommend you speak to two, three, four people um, and and probe because you know you you are going. You, this is a proper. This isn't kind of a cosy thing. This is someone who's going to unlock new ideas for you and help you for, to progress. And that's not going to happen unless you're with someone who you feel comfortable sharing challenges with so ask questions you're interviewing let them as much as they're interviewing you um so it should be a two-way flow well, i've been i've been debating this in my mind um recently in terms of whether you should look for someone who's accredited or not mm -hmm. um i guess it, the, the benefit of working with someone who's accredited is that they they they've got some great tools at their disposal that they've been taught and they've, they've learned with. Um, and that can unlock thinking that you might not unlock without those types of tools. Having said that, you know, I, I, I know some people who've worked with someone who are people who are more like coach mentors. And you know, we, we're not saying mentors are a bad thing. I think mm. both Sarah and I have, have I, I actually physically go, right, I'm taking my coaching hat off now and I'm going to put my mentor hat on. Because um, there are times where it's, useful it, having someone finding someone who's got similar life experiences to you might be helpful yeah. as well um just so that you can connect with them and they can connect with you um <clears throat> and, and and word of mouth isn't isn't a bad way mm. thing to, to consider as well if you know someone who's worked well with you with a with a friend and and you are kind of similar to your friend then there's a chance that they could be a good person for you to yeah. work with as well so Really invest that time up front to to make sure you feel comfortable with, with the person you're working with, I think will be my top tip from that perspective. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, and I can imagine, I guess, sort of leading up to that first session um, can be quite nerve wracking for people, right? Because essentially you're sharing quite personal things. I mean, Richard, can you sort of share some insights into how you felt before you had your first session with Clive and Sarah? Um, I think you, the, the word you use, nerves, is probably one of the biggest emotions that I went through. Um, I mean, having never had coaching before, I guess a lack of an expectation really of what coaching really was or how powerful it was. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I probably was a bit naive that I thought a coach, and you know, obviously Sarah and Clive have mentioned the differences between coaching and mentors. I probably went into it with more of the hat that thought actually they're going to hear my problems, um, give me a checklist of ABC to do, and then you know, sort of go in out, and then everything will be hunky dory. But um, <laughs> it was far from that. So it was, um, 
yeah, I think nerves and just lack of expectation, but obviously hopefully the, the benefit of having this this webinar is to open the eyes of the potential coachee um, so that they realize that actually it's it's more about working with the, the coach to, to unlock your full potential, to navigate those difficulties or, or changes that you might be going through. Yeah. Definitely. And Sarah, how would you advise that someone should prepare, especially for their kind of first session, not knowing necessarily what it will entail? Good good question. I, I think there's assuming they've done some chemistry and they've had some conversation about you know what what coaching is and what they uh, uh, like is I think relax a bit because I think remember this is about you this is for your benefit so this is your time so there is no right or wrong or there's no right way of doing it it's up to you the coachee so I think thinking about it from that perspective um, is this is for me so therefore I'm actually going to try and look forward to it because I've got a whole hour to talk about myself which who doesn't like talking about themselves right um, and I think if you can be a bit prepared with some kind of topic that you want to get out, of, you know, talk about, and I don't think you have to over prepare that because a good coach will help you to work out what the outcome should be. Or they might say, well, what do you want out of this session and what does that look like mm -hmm. and what can we do? So but some idea of something you want to discuss. Um, and then from a logistical perspective, I would say make sure you're on time. So I've coached people who have literally come from one meeting straight into coaching and they are, you know, flustered, they're stressed, their mind is not in the right place. Um, and, and you can spend the first 10 minutes of a coaching session just trying to get them in, in, in the right mindset. And so I'd say my advice as well is if you can have a decent bit of time before your coaching session, at least a half an hour, just to get yourself into the place where you're going to be giving it your attention and you're going to be listening and responding appropriately. And then I think the last thing is just being ready and willing to change, mm -hmm. to think and, and, you know, be in that right place in your head. I think those are all the things I would do to prep, but I wouldn't overthink it either. Yeah. Well, actually, one thing I think that, the, the feeling you get in your stomach when you're nervous and the feeling you get when you're excited are actually the same feeling if you think about it. So I think sometimes reframing your nerves into saying that feeling, actually, I'm excited, not nervous, can also mm. change the way you think about things just generally, not just coaching. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think you make a really good point about sort of wanting to change and that this has to be. I guess sort of the individual needs to want to do it rather than, you know, their boss has said you could do with a coach or whatever it may be. I can imagine it's probably quite easy to swap the people that almost want to be in the room and and those that don't. I mean, are there any sort of other ways that you think it's sort of best for a coachee to work with a coach? Yeah, that, that point about wanting to d understand what you're doing the coaching for and why, not because, I mean, some people, you here's a coach to help you get through a, a promotion process. And perhaps that is maybe more akin to mentoring, actually. So understanding why you're there. But I think is being prepared to be really honest with yourself as well as the coach, because as Clive said, you know, a good coach is going to challenge you and, and ask you some quite probing questions. And you don't need to have your mask on in a coaching session. You don't need to say, I wonder how this is going to be taken. I wonder if I'm saying the right thing. You say what you want. So willingness to be honest, to explore kind of options and to dig a bit deep sometimes and accept that that's part of what coaching is. Um, and I think the other thing as well is try not to see your coaching session as the time, the only time you're actually going to think about making change. So how can you, the US use this word, the stickiness, how can you take what you've learned or thought about in coaching and keep on applying it? Mm -hmm. um, how can you make changes and actions sort of sustainable? Um, and then I guess the last thing is they're kind of honoring your commitment. So if you've taken the time to have coaching, and you said, I am going to do this. And the coach might have said, well, on the scale of one to 10, what are the chances of you doing this? And you go, oh, it's a nine. Yeah, you know, well, <laughs> either be honest and say it's a six so the coach can help you yeah. work out, get it to a nine or a 10. But if it's a nine, when you finish, don't go, well, that's over right now. I'll go back to the day job. Try mm -hmm. to really think about coaching outside of the actual sessions. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's similar to what Clive said, that it's kind of a, a contract, right? A two-way partnership. And both of you need to kind of, put in the effort to kind of get the best that you know the best out of it 
Um, I know in our final poll, um, you know, we are sort of, I guess, people's view on sort of how employers use coaches. And I think it was a huge sort of 56% said that no one has one. Clive, was that quite a surprise to you? I was surprised it was as, as high as that, to be honest. Um, because I think, I, I wondered if you, are, if you ask business owners whether or not they provided coaches, mm. what the percentage would be, because I, I suspect they think they are, but maybe they're not. I mean, because a coach is, as, you know, as we've been banging on about for the last half hour or so, a coach is very different. It's something offline. It can't. It's not your people manager. It's not your buddy. It's not your mentor. Um so I, I, I guess from it actually left me quite excited at the opportunity for for businesses to tap into potential in their employees that they haven't tapped into yet um, by utilising coaches because um, the, I, I don't know this is a dangerous thing to say I don't know anyone who's used a coach who hasn't felt as though it was a worth worthwhile lot the use of their yeah. time and it hasn't un unlocked new ideas and new ways of uh, of, of of working and, and unlocked additional potential that they probably didn't even realise was there to start with. And why do you think um, <clears throat> so many employers don't use coaches? Do you think it is the point that they think they are offering it, but in reality they're not? Or what else could be behind it? I, I suspect it's a couple of things. I mean, you, you said earlier, you know, some is, have I got the time for this coaching mm. session? If employees are already stretched, will they actually value having another thing to do, finding time with a coach? I remember actually when I was doing my first training, saying to the person who was kind of my called a coach supervisor when you're learning to be a coach, and saying to him, now why on earth did anyone want to spend an hour of their day chatting to me? <laughs> and um, he, he, he just kind of shone it right back at me and said, well, now, wouldn't you value an hour just away from everything to really get some clear thinking about what's important to you? So I think there's a, an element of um, of everyone's really busy and maybe we don't want to create more pressure for them. But but actually, we all know that sometimes, you know, pedaling faster isn't the right answer. Sometimes you need to just step back and think more strategically about how to do things, how to work smarter rather than keep working harder. And coaching can unlock those ideas um I, I guess there's probably also an element of cost um yeah. it's an additional cost and you know we we know it's a tough economic environment at the moment and there's always that cost benefit analysis where you know how, how do i know it, how do i know i'm going to get a return on my investment yeah. and how quickly i'm going to get it and it is slightly softer than some things you invest in and you, you know you're going to get a return because it's easy to measure yeah, um, and professionally, certainly in the professional services industry, you know, we're accountants, so we need to measure it. We need to feel as though you can put a stamp on it in terms of the value it's added. So I suspect there's an element uh, of not appreciating the value as well. Mm, yeah, I can I can understand that. You know, I guess it's one of those things that if somebody does it, they have a good experience, as you said, the kind of power of word of mouth will pay sort of dividends and Richard what's your view on how employers could use coaches as part of their kind of talent management program uh, yeah I mean being through it myself and still on it and still going to go through it I think it's it's definitely one of those things that employers should be using because it will unlock potential that you know a leadership program or a management course can only you know it will unlock so much more than what those can do because those as you said tells you how to do things in a certain way whereas it's really pushing those individuals like you know, i went on it so i can speak firsthand about it um but it, it's to challenge that growth mindset and to grow that growth mindset so that those people that do go on that i guess potentially could become even future leaders of that firm mm -hmm. um so I, I think it's definitely something that should not be used in let's say in in, in the place of a mentor or a leadership program but it should be used in conjunction to get the optimal out of every person within the workforce because you know, as, as everyone's highlighted it. It's not just an individual or a group of individuals, but it potentially is an entire workforce that should be going on a, you know, a coaching course of some level or degree of complexity. Um, so, yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, it kind of links back to your point earlier, Clive, the the sports analogy that you would never have not have a coach in that scenario. So it's kind of true in other careers. I just don't think it's necessarily, I guess, sort of that well highlighted. Um, I'm quite conscious of time and I want to get through sort of some of the questions that have been asked. I mean, Clive and Sarah, before we move on to those, is there anything else that you sort of wanted to add today? So, um, I just think just picking up on on Richard's point there around that coaching um, for coaching for all. Um, I think that there are once you understand kind of some of the tenet the tenets of coaching and the kind of what good questions look like, you can use that in your in your business more widely. So often you can create a coaching culture where when someone asks something or wants some help, you can say, well, how do you think that might, what have you tried? You can use that as well. So I think sometimes it's about having a coach. Yes, is great. And it, and I am a total advocate for having many people coaching at all levels, but also you can create a coaching culture in your organization by just thinking about how you respond to and deal with, with questions and when people are asking for advice. So I think that's quite important. I think Richard alluded to it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think I'd say um, if you haven't tried it, give it a go. You, uh, I'm sh sure you won't be disappointed with the result. And and if you are lucky enough to work with a coach, you know, start using those skills with your team. Mm. Because, uh, <clears throat> the levels of in, the increased levels of empowerment by asking people questions rather than telling them answers. And the impact that then has on people's level levels of engagement, part part feeling as though they are actually really part of the team and their views are really valued. Mm -hmm. and I, I, I experienced it myself in my team as I started to use the skills. The, the, the impact it has in in terms of the uh, the performance of the team is incredible. So um, if, if you do have a coach, use those skills with your team as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, thank you um, all very much. I will, let me just have a quick look at the questions now. Um, so I think one of the questions is around sort of how many coaching sessions, I'm going to direct this to you, Clive. <laughs> um, how many coaching sessions would you advise someone to have? I would say at least three. I think really six is a good number. Uh, and part of part of that contract um, at the outset is you know, we are going to have three or we are going to have six mm -hmm. sessions, and and to set really clear goals at the beginning of those sessions, and then you can and actually measure progress as you go. Um, and if you're just curious, almost as part of the chemistry session, you probably will have a kind of mini coaching session as part of that. So. Um, if you can find a coach that's prepared to invest half an hour with you just to give you a sense of whether you'd find it beneficial yeah. before you before you commit to three or six sessions, um, it's probably worth exploring as well. Some coaches will and, and some might not. Um, yeah. I think you need to be prepared to, and as Sarah said not, not too long ago, you, know, you need to really throw yourself into it to get it's an old saying, isn't it? The more you put in, the more you'll get out. So take it seriously. If you think you can only commit to three to start with, then just go for three. I think you'll get more benefit if you go for six. Definitely. And Sarah, you can have this one. Um, are there any um, questions or subjects that you would say are not appropriate for coaching? Um, in a career sense, no. Um, I yeah, I can't imagine what they might be. Um, because you're not judging some something. I think sometimes coaching can leach into personal things. Um, so it's particularly in the, yeah, because we we are people, aren't we? So we bring some of that stuff to, to work. Um, and I think there would be areas that perhaps you might not be qualified to deal with as a coach. So if someone was talking about something medical or kind of mental, um, then I would say they aren't appropriate only in the sense of, you know, as a coach you might not be qualified to deal with them and I think as a coach you think quite carefully is, is my 
coaching leading towards something that's maybe perhaps more designed for therapy um, mm. but in terms of topics no and I've had some really you know, varied ones in terms of you know people I've got this toxic person I'm working with and we have a really good discussion about well you know, what, what do you mean by that and what's your role in this so mm. not in a business and work context and, and actually you know going back to Clyde's point sometimes that unfolds I mean at the beginning in that chemistry session you might be talking about well I want coaching because I want to get this big promotion and actually other things drop out as you go along <clears> the <throat> coaching journey so mm-hmm. some things that you might not even be expecting might come out of those sessions um, if you did think they were kind of inappropriate in any sense I mean that would normally be if, if someone was talking about harming themselves or somebody else then mm-hmm. they it but typically no I wouldn't say there's anything really off limits yeah and another one of the questions um Clive is around sort of who coaching is appropriate for you obviously use it personally when you were on you know I guess sort of a promotion journey yeah. what's your view on that is it all levels <clears throat> you know all areas that people work in or yeah we focus on um coaching in, in a business ex- environment there are people who are life coaches so you can coach for different different aspects of people's lives we, we focus on on the work aspects i think it there's always there's always benefit to having a coach um where i've seen it used most often is around promotions to a, a more senior role and then i'm always certainly i'm always really conscious when i'm coaching in that context that i, that I coach and not mentor um, and you know, I've stopped coaching people because they didn't want to be coached. They just wanted mm. to be told the answers to get through the process. Mm. And that's not what I'm there to do. Yeah. Um, so there will be key points in your career where it will feel more beneficial in terms of directly being able to measure it. And it really can make a huge difference. You know, I've, I've coached people. I remember one guy who was coming through to director and we sat down and he'd got his business case in front of him. And, and you know, he, he was quite a kind of bubbly, outgoing pers- personality. And we started talking about his business case. And I could just see his shoulders drooping mm. and, and his body language and his leg and his voice. was. And I just said, well, can we just stop and say, you, you don't believe in this business case, do you? Mm. I said, well, no, but this is the, what my boss wants me to focus mm. on. So well, we really need to go back to your boss and get him to work on a business case you're passionate about because... You know, it's really tough to get these promotions anyway, and you're diminishing your chances significantly if you don't really believe in it yourself. Mm. We were able to actually go back to the boss and say, look, this is what he's passionate about. Look at what the opportunity is in the marketplace just to do that. And and he and it went he went from success to success. But um yeah. I think just when you need time to really work out what it's all about and what you want to do, there's particularly a promotion to a partner, it's a big commitment. And I, you know, I've had long internal discussions with myself about myself about whether it was what I wanted and could I do that and be the dad I wanted at home and have the other aspects of the life I wanted and be a partner and they're, they're big questions and if you're not clear on them in your mind when you go into the process then you won't be able to do yourself justice yeah yeah I guess any point you know Sarah you were mentioning when you were coming back off your second maternity leave you know any point that there's kind of a change whether it's a change in role or you know because of personal experiences a change going on there but in a business context I could really see that you know kind of being beneficial um and what um one of the sort of other questions was sort of what's been your most rewarding experience, Clive or Sarah? I don't know which one of you wants to take this. Um, in terms of coaching. I mean, it sounds like what you just described, Clive, was it must have been very rewarding to kind of see some real tangible benefit. Um, you know, and and see somebody go on that journey and and you know, I guess it create an opportunity that perhaps might not have been created otherwise. But are there sort of without obviously breaking any confidentiality, sort of any other experiences as a coach that you've, you know, found it really rewarding? Sarah, do you want to go on that one? I've already had a yeah, little no, bit. I, I'm happy to so, <clears throat> so so many because when you see somebody change something that they thought was set in stone or they've they found a different route that is just amazing and and I guess I've got a, a couple so I've done a lot with women co- kind of coaching um particularly actually women at those transition points you know I've I've 
I want children. And you know, some that say things like, well, I've, I've, I've just come back after my first mat leave and the, the business has stretched all this out in front of me, but I'm going to go and have another child at some point. So can you help me work through that? Mm-hmm. And you know, I have one in particular who said, I think I'm going to have to leave because what, what the business wants me to do in order to progress and what I want in my personal life, they just don't tally. And actually, we worked together where we could. That was around some of those boundaries and that perspective around the kind of importance of the two areas. And we worked together over about six months. And she became much more confident in what her role was in the business. And actually, can I can have it all, but I can do it at my own pace. And how do I manage that with the business without feeling that I'm kind of somehow not ambitious anymore or not wanting to progress anymore? So those ones have been really rewarding. So I've had a couple of those where people have thought they needed to leave or change careers, mm-hmm. but actually haven't because there's something else going on that you know they were able to work out for themselves with my help. Those are brilliant. And when yeah. you get that person going, oh, I feel so much better. I feel so relieved. I feel so empowered those are really great to watch they're just so nice to be part of yeah definitely it's a classic situation of a problem shared is a problem halved <laughs> totally and you know sometimes coaching I, you know when you have that kind of best friend that's broken up with a boyfriend and you sit and you just listen to them for ages and they go oh, thank you you've been so helpful and you think well I haven't said anything sometimes <clears throat> coaching can be like that where they just talk and you listen and you add a few questions I've I've seen coaching observation sessions where literally the coach does you know eight percent of the talking mm. and the coachy is like you know 92 percent, and they come out and go that's been a fantastic session and yeah. as you, watch it, you think they've only asked a few questions but that person's got so much out of that and yeah those, it's just it's a privilege to be part of those if it doesn't sound right no absolutely well I guess that's where the sort of the chemistry point that we've touched on the psychological safety all of that kind of plays a part right because it's somebody feeling comfortable enough to to talk (laughs) and just be listened to rather than expecting somebody else to kind of drive drive the conversation so um so yeah that all makes sense well look I'm conscious of time I feel like I could spend all afternoon talking to the three of you um thank you to Clive Sarah and Richard um for joining me today it's been a thoroughly insightful session from my perspective and I I really hope that the audience have found it beneficial um as well thank you to the audience for joining um and I hope everybody has a good rest of the afternoon Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.